Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 28th. First up, this was sent to me by Jose Angel. I'll play just a little bit of the video here. It's entitled, it's from BBC and it's entitled, Artificial Clouds Could Help Cool 2022 Qatar World Cup. Scientists at Qatar University claim to have developed artificial clouds to provide shade for stadia and training grounds at the 2022 World Cup. This is actually just an odd-shaped version of a blimp with added uh, directing fans and then added solar panels on top. And what they're going to try to do is keep this in position between the sun and the stadium to keep it cool enough because people are complaining that the World Cup games would get way too hot by having them in the summer where temperatures can reach, uh, I don't know, well, well into the 90s or beyond in the area. The other option they had is possibly just uh, moving it to the winter part of the season. But, yeah, kind of a cool idea there, and especially because of the fact it contains helium. It's not going to, like, just drop down like some kind of a, a heavyweight craft or something like that and crash into the stadium and hurt people. It's probably not much of any different than the principle of uh, now in football games and baseball games and stuff like that where we have blimps circling around above the stadium, too, taking uh, shots and playing advertisements and things like that. So kind of a cool idea. I think it's going to cost around half a million dollars, so not really super expensive for what what they're actually doing. Um, I'm kind of wondering, though, with uh, the Middle East countries and with all the money they have for uh, from the oil and stuff like that, why they don't just enclose the stadiums and make them air-conditioned. But uh, I don't know. I guess the, they must there must be a reason behind it. And next up, this is from CNN Money. This is from my friend Kira B. She sent this. She's America's youngest female billionaire. Her name is Elizabeth Holmes, and she quit college at the age of 19 and took the tuition money her parents had saved and decided to start her business and has ended up becoming a uh, the world's youngest billionaire. It's uh, lab tests is what she's developed, and it's not just um, ordinary lab tests. She's made them a lot easier to do and a lot less expensive. She's even partnering with Walgreens and may set up a system to where in the future, maybe in a few years or so, you can walk into a Walgreens and have either a machine or a person take a tiny pinprick of blood, just one drop of blood, and run up to 70 tests for a lot cheaper than your normal blood tests. I don't know if any of you guys have to go for regular blood tests from your doctor, but it involves uh, getting poked with needles and vials of blood and then sent out to laboratories and uh, expense that could be anywhere from like 70, 80 bucks or well over 100 bucks for some of these blood tests. So. She's going to get the cost down to a fraction of that, evidently, and she wants eventually to have it to where all of these blood testing centers for 90% uh, of the population, they'll have them within five miles of where they live. So convenient and expensive and uh, uh, also um, just, I don't know, just making it for, for people that fear needles, especially needle pokes and stuff like that. They say more than half of the people that uh, are supposed to have blood tests don't end up doing them because they don't like the, either they can't afford the expense or they're afraid of the needles. So just a, a simple little pin prick to, to get a drop of blood is a little bit easier to deal with. And this next one, this is from Science Now. Young Jupiter wiped out solar systems early inner planet study says. The scientists have been wondering why as we've been discovering more and more solar systems they just don't tend to look like ours. They have uh, rocky planets towards the uh, sun, towards the, you know, towards their um, their star, their inner sun, or whatever. But what they are is they're they're huge. I mean, these rocky planets are huge compared to Earth. Sometimes double, triple the size, and they're uh, close in, and they orbit very quickly. And they're wondering what could have caused our solar system to be quite different, to where our our rocky planets are smaller and they orbit out farther from the sun in the Goldilocks zone where it's a little bit more compatible with life and stuff like that. Well, what they think it is, is they think at one time Jupiter, because of the gas and stuff as the solar system was forming, Jupiter actually coasted in to where it was uh, about the distance of Mars and got in closer to the sun. And if we did have these super Earth type of rocky planets, that the uh, tidal forces of the gravity of Jupiter and um, just the fact of it moving around and pulling and tugging on these planets would have caused them to either break apart or fall into the sun. So the original first sets of rocky planets may have been just totally destroyed by Jupiter. And then as Saturn formed later in the orbit just past Jupiter, Saturn actually tugged Jupiter back into the orbit that it is now. And then that left the uh, planetesimals, as they call them, the little uh, objects and stuff like that, and gases and little pieces of rock and stuff to 
form the smaller rocky planets out at more stable um, orbits as far as, uh, or not more stable orbits, more compatible orbits for life, I would say, in the case of the Earth especially, and maybe Mars, you could, you could include that if we do find um, life on Mars. But yeah, kind of an interesting, they call the original one Solar System 1.0, the one before uh, the present one that we know now. And it says here, in Solar System 1.0, the region closest to the Sun was occupied by numerous planets with masses several times bigger than that of Earth. There were also planetesimals, planetary building blocks, that formed within the first million years after the birth of the Sun. Uh, this is how things might have stayed if the young Jupiter had stayed put in its initial orbit between 3 and 10 astronomical units away from the Sun. But Jupiter was relentless, and then it just goes into the story, the same story I told you about, you know, drifting in and drifting out. Now, this is speculation. It's just um, another possibility of the way it could have happened, but... Um, to me, there has to be some oddball reason to why our solar system has the rocky planets the way they are in close, uh, but still um, far enough away to be in slow orbits and not these uh, super rocky planets that you know orbit in, as, in a matter of days. So one of quite a few different ideas, possibly. This last one is from my friend, 1954 Shadow Bob. NASA plans to bring Boulder into moon orbit. I talked about it before about the spacecraft Orion being sent to uh, um, rendezvous with an asteroid and catch it. Well, now they're going to scale this down just a little bit. They're going to send a uh, unmanned craft out, and instead of actually lassoing a asteroid and trying to get it in orbit around the moon, they're going to pluck a boulder, a large boulder, from an asteroid and then send it into moon orbit and then send the astronauts out later to rendezvous with the robot spacecraft and the boulder. So, um, I'm all in agreement with this. Take it in baby steps, too. Don't try to do everything all at a time. If we're going to learn how to deal with asteroids and comets and possible things like that that could uh, endanger our planet, let's let's do it in little baby steps. And this is going to take place sometime in the mid-2020s, it says. the option to re I'll just read a little bit. The option to retrieve a boulder from an asteroid will have a direct impact on planning for future human missions to deep space and begin a new era of spaceflight. NASA Associate Administrator for bar tour administrator Robert Lightfoot said in a statement about the asteroid redirect mission. Also, they're going to get a lot more experience with using the Orion spacecraft for uh, deep space travel and hopefully a trip to Mars. Um, I'm still hoping in, in my lifetime, possibly. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.